The seven tips that will make you a better landscape photographer. Hello, Photopillar, Rafael Dabar here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you seven tips that I see great landscape photographers around me use all the time to take their amazing photos. I'm talking about photographers like the Nutella team in the Photopillar's camp, Albert Dross, Francesco Lola, and Alain Locardi, or my friends Marco Grassi and Michael Shamblum. But not only professional photographers apply these tips. I see a lot of the tips I'm gonna share in this video apply to the photos you guys, the Photopillar's community, submit to the Photo Pills Awards and that uh, we feature every day amazing photos. So long story short, I hope these seven tips will get you inspired and will help you push your landscape photography to the next level. Ready? Because everything begins with a plan. Tip number one, plan your photos. Albert Ross plans his photos. Francesco Gola plans his photos. Marco Grassi plans his photos. Why? Well, because a goal without a plan is just a wish. Because planning opens a new door to a whole universe of creativity. It allows you to imagine a photo and find the right shooting spot, the right shooting date and the right shooting time the photo that you want to capture actually occurs. So you can go and capture it. Planning simply maximizes your chances to go back home with a great photo. As simple as that. So tell me, do you plan your photos? Let me know in the comments. And if you just discovered that planning a photo is possible, please let me know in the comments too. And please let me help you. And let me welcome to the tribe. Now you wish to learn how to plan your landscape photos, your moon photos, your Milky Way photos, or any other type of photography. Here you have a complete masterclass on how to plan your photos step by step using photo pills. Watch it. Tip number two, include a powerful subject. Your subject is the main character of the story your photo is trying to tell. Including an interesting subject that plays well with the foreground and background elements is key. So go out, explore and find interesting subjects to include in your photos. Find mountains, isolated trees, stunning rock formations, secret caves, interesting buildings. The options are endless. And if you can't find anything, include the human figure in the photo. Tip number three, experiment with different focal lengths. Using a wide angle lens will surely work great in many, many scenes. It will allow you to capture the grandeur of the landscape in front of you. But you don't always have to use a wide angle lens. Try to use longer focal lens to 100 mm, 200 mm or more to capture a close up of the scene, to lure the viewer's attention to a certain part of the scene, to tell a completely different story. So experiment, use a wide angle lens, use a telephoto lens, shoot a panel, experiment till you find the photo. Tip number four, use the creative power of depth of field. Usually we all want everything to be in focus or at least acceptably sharp in our photos. And for that, to maximize the depth of field in our photos, we can use different focusing techniques. Focusing techniques such as focusing at the hyperfocal distance, which you can calculate with photo pills and you can master if you watch this video, focusing at one third into the frame or using the focus stacking technique to get the scene 100% in focus from front to back. Here what you do is to take several photos focusing at different spots to make sure that the whole scene will be in focus and then in post processing home then you blend all these photos to get an image that is 100% sharp. And yes, having everything in focus is great, but sometimes leaving some parts of the scene out of focus, some parts of the photo out of focus, will add to the story. So think first what you want to be in focus and out of focus in your photo. And then use the depth of field tools you have in your hands to get the depth of field you want. I'm talking about the aperture, the focal length and the focus distance where you're focusing. And if you don't know how to control these tools, you want to master the depth of field, I invite you to watch this video. Tip number five, use the creative power of shutter speed. During the Frappil scam this year, Mark Denny gave a one hour class on how to use shutter speed to tell better stories, to tell better stories in our photos. And truth is that shutter speed is a really powerful storytelling element. Sometimes you want a fast shutter speed to freeze the movement in the scene. Other times you want exactly the opposite. You want a slow shutter speed, a long exposure time to show the movement in the scene in the photo. So the question is, what's the shutter 
speed you need to use? Well, it's your creative choice. It will depend on how fast the action is occurring in the scene and how you want to portray it in the photo, how you want to show that action in your photo. If you don't know where to start, if you don't know what shutter speed to use, well, here you have a suggestion of different shutter speeds to use in different situations. Again, take these values as suggestions because everything depends on how fast the movement appears in the scene and how you want to show it in the photo. So it's all about testing. Use a shutter speed to start with and then adjust accordingly depending on the results you're getting. Tip number six, use the creative power of lens filters. It's no secret that in the Photopills team, we love lens filters. Have you ever used lens filters? If yes, which ones are your favorite ones? Please let me know in the comments. Why do we love lens filters? Because we love getting the image almost finished on camera. And because it gets us more creative. And because it's super, super fun. For example, we use the polarizing filter to get rid of reflections and for example, capture the detail, capture what's underneath the water surface. We use the GND filter, the, gradu the graduated filter on the sky, to reduce the dynamic range in the scene and capture the whole scene correctly exposed in one single exposure. Our favorite GND filter is the three stop soft GND. And we use the ND filters to shoot a much longer exposure, for example, to show the movements of clouds in the sky and water in the sea. Our most used ND filters are the six stops and 10 stops. And of course, I will love playing with filters. We love stacking them to get the photo as finished as possible on camera. The creative possibilities that lens filters offer to us are endless. And if you still learn how to use all types of, uh, and, and if you still learn how to use all these type of filters, even how to stack them, watch this video. And the last tip, tip number seven, work on your editing skills. Despite we love getting as much as the photo done on camera, we cannot neglect the power of editing our photos once at home. Using powerful editing tools like Lightroom and Photoshop will give you another layer of creative control. From basic fixes to completely real edits. You have at your hand a large number of options and techniques to enhance your photos. Once again, to tell the story you want to tell. So my last tip is to non-stop improve your planning skills and your editing skills. The more you know, the more creative you'll be. And if you want to know how to edit your photos, how to post-process your photos with the always great Albert Ross, watch this video here. Now, if you wish to keep improving your landscape photography skills, I invite you to download our super detailed landscape photography guide. I'm going to leave a link to the guide in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, I had the power to imagine, plan, and shoot. Legendary photos. Bye.